This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Welcome to In an Instant, my name is Ben, and today we are here in the newly updated Instant Lounge in the new In an Instant studio. And uh, we're celebrating the new year, 2023 is here, and it's time to take some questions and catch up a little bit. You beautiful people submitted a lot of questions. I had to select just a few to keep this a little bit short and sweet, we'll see. But without further ado, let's kick it off and start chatting a little bit about film. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Thou shall not hesitate. Let's get into the first question. It's from Dash B. Trippin. As film photography rises in popularity, what direction do you think the industry is going? I feel like the film industry is in a very interesting place right now. It, it's a struggle because the prices of film are really high. That's gotta be putting off new users, especially color film. Uh, the price for color film is just too high. Um, I understand that we've transitioned from the point of the industry where Kodak and Fuji were so desperate to sell film because the industry had collapsed. They were so desperate to sell it that the prices just collapsed as well. They were very low. Now, as interest rises and demand rises and production has to ramp up, costs naturally have to rise and film being more of a niche commodity, it's gonna cost more per unit because they're making less of it. They're not selling as much of it. That's just how like economy works. That being said, I think there has to be a middle ground. Um, I think that's one of the major issues in the industry right now. One of the cool things happening is that Leica released the new M6. Pentax just announced that they're developing a project to work hopefully on new cameras. Uh, they're looking to make a point and shoot. They're looking to build up to making an SLR um, and maybe like a premium professional level film camera that's using like modern features that they have in their digital cameras. Um, I think like all of that is an enormous sign of health for the industry. Um, when these camera manufacturers start developing this stuff again, it's great for the ecosystem of film photography. There's gonna be new camera parts. There's gonna be new, uh, newly trained specialists working on cameras and hopefully also working on film. Kodak just hired 300 people uh, to ramp up production. So I think we're in a good spot and I'm very excited for the future. I think we are uh, primed for success as a community here. Indistinguishable from asks, will instant film ever get cheaper? Is Polaroid working on production efficiencies? The funny thing about Polaroid during all of these price increases and the film supply and demand issue being so tough, um, Polaroid's been pretty much fine. They, they've like kept up with demand, even through COVID. I mean, there were times where SX-70 film was pretty hard to get, but in general, Polaroid has not only had film available, but has pretty much kept it at around the same price. Um, whether Polaroid film will get cheaper, I don't really think so. Polaroid film is already cheaper than, you know, roll film. And while you may say, yeah, you get eight shots with Polaroid, but you get 36 on roll film or whatever. Well, Polaroid is literally like has a developing packet inside and there's chemistry and plastics and all kinds of things that make it significantly more advanced and costly per shot than roll film. So I don't really see Polaroid film getting less expensive. And I don't think that's a huge problem. I know people are put off by it. I know Instax is cheaper, but um, I think that Polaroid needs to keep that price point and I hope it doesn't go up, but right now, iType film, you can get for like $15 a pack buying in bulk. That's really not that bad. So, you know, I'm sure they're working on optimizing production, but I'm not sure that's gonna actually lower prices at any point. Right Angle asks, best tips to keep instant photography more affordable? This is a great follow-up question. Um, I would recommend if you can, to shoot with iType film. Um, there is the company Resovat, there's Pola Studio, several companies that are making battery packs for the SX-70. Um, so that can make the SX-70 compatible with iType film uh, because it's externally powered. Uh, or just use an iType camera. The Polaroid Now Plus is awesome, uh, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I, I would say use iType film. And of course, you could be more selective with how much you shoot with it. I found that I've gotten more and more over the years optimized, to use that word again, uh, with how I shoot. 
Um, I feel like I used to cover scenes maybe a little bit more thoroughly if I was like traveling and taking uh, uh, two or three shots of kind of the same subject. Whereas now I kind of just find my, my one composition. And if you think of using Polaroid film almost like a pack of large format film and you're being selective with each shot, it certainly would make it much cheaper. Um, and you can get crafty with your Polaroids after you use them sort of savoring the time you spend with each shot. You can do emulsion lifts, you can do interesting things that prolong the experience of shooting a single Polaroid. Polaroid Emoji asks, favorite new film stock that dropped this year? I must say, uh, I'll drop a little BFC plug here. Um, we at BFC were the first place in America to get Flick Films rebranded Kodak Aero Color 4 film. So I made a whole video about that. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but basically these guys up in Alberta, Canada, uh, they called right before we were moving from our old location to our new location. And they said, hey guys, like, do you want any of this film? We're like re-spooling it. We have a factory uh, up up here and we're, we're re-spooling mostly ECN2 cinema film that still has the Remjet layer on it. But we just acquired this C41 film. And we were like, yes, yes, father. I would very much like that. So we got it and we tried it and it was freaking awesome. It's Kodak Aero Color 4. It was an aerial surveillance film um, and still is actively produced. It's a fresh film, but is not traditionally spooled for consumers. There's some companies who have like Santa Color, uh, but this is an effort by Flick Film to make this more widely available and continuously available. And uh, the video we shot for BFC TV on it was really fun. We shot it TWA. Um, I'm really happy with not only how that video came out, but also the pictures. Sometimes that's a very hard combination of things to achieve when you're shooting both things at once. But uh, yeah, I, I, I love that film. It's got incredible latitude. The colors are really nice and natural. It was completely unexpected to kind of get access to a new-ish film stock this year. So while there's plenty of cool new black and white films and Orwo's producing new color cinema film, um, I would say I have to go with the Arrow Color 4. Upside Walk Down asks, describe the instant film of your dreams. What shape would it have? What properties? It's a really interesting question because a lot of times when I'm asked a question like this, it's about, you know, what my dream camera would be. But thinking of the dream Polaroid instant film, something that like I would die to have would be a high speed black and white integral film. Polaroid actually produced a 3000 speed integral film, um, but it was for like industrial use. I don't think anyone really used it much. The idea would be 3000 speed black and white able to shoot in the dark of night. I feel like not only is it possible, we know that Fuji was able to produce FP3000B, the pack film, and that film is, is one of the coolest films of all time. And I feel like it could easily be ported into integral film easily, like I freaking know what I'm talking about. But, um, <laughs> but something that is often the main sacrifice shooting with high speed film is the addition of so much grain and loss of detail. But with integral film, I feel like that wouldn't be as apparent just because of the way integral film sort of chemically blends everything together and it's already sort of a lower detail film. Um, so I feel like black and white, high speed film, integral. The issue would be that uh, none of the cameras are calibrated to handle it. Damn, that actually really sucks. Insta Eric asks, updates on the Kodak pack film rumor. Well, I feel like Dan asks, how is it to be part of the 1212 project? The 1212 Project, for those who are not aware, is a collective of now 24 artists who are assigned a monthly theme that they all have to work on. And so we get our theme. Uh, my, my group of 12 posts on the 30th of every month, so you kind of get a full month to think about what am I shooting for this theme. Um, it's really, really cool to be shooting the same theme as other favorite artists. I have like a bunch of people I have an unbelievable amount of respect for that are in the collective and are in my group. So it's really cool to see what they shoot versus what I'm shooting. And an interesting challenge of like trying to create some sort of connective tissue between the images that you're making, even though they're all in different themes. And that's been a challenge I've been working on. Um, but beyond that, I just think it's a beautiful thing that I wish there was more of. I think the, the internet is great for posting your images, but it's also very powerful to use in this sort of community art way. 
um, and having all of us assigned to these tasks, communicating people from all over the world. Um, it's, it's, I'm, so, I'm, I'm truly so honored to be a part of it and I hope to do it until my bones rot. I feel like Dan also asks, what's the longest sheesh you can do? <clears throat> Shit! Otto Taku asks, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. No, oh, I got you. Cops? Yeah, Otto Taku freaking fell over. He can't get up, I already asked. All right, okay, bye. They'll be right over. Elf Rider and Alley asks, is this happening in our living room again? That is my lovely wife asking that question. And no, it's not happening in her living room. As I mentioned in the intro, this is the instant lounge, um, which you may be more used to seeing on that purple backdrop. That was in the old studio. So I just moved into a completely new space uh, that actually shares a wall with the old space. It's a little bit smaller, but a little bit more optimized as well. I, I think I've said the word optimized like three times in this video three too many times. I gotta optimize the way I use the word optimize. But anyway, the studio space is a little bit smaller, but it shares the bones of the space. The spirit is still alive in here. And there's gonna be uh, a lot of fun that we're gonna have in here. And I can't wait to make new memories and make new art and sort of christen it with creativity. Michael R. King Jr. asks, how do you keep your passion for photography alive? I really don't find that my passion for photography is ever challenged in any way. Um, I think I've had a couple of times where I felt burnout, but it really was from other sources. Photography has always been um, like a very comforting thing for me and a meditative thing for a lot of people I know. And so the, when the stresses of the world can get to you, photography is sort of the outlet. Um, so my passion is always sort of broiling. And the other aspect of it is that um, I love to shoot pictures of human beings. I meet a lot of unique people. And so if you love portraiture and you love people and you're meeting new people all the time, it keeps it fresh. And the other thing that I love is adventure and adventuring to find interesting spots, glimpses of the past, the kind of stuff that I love shooting with more architectural style. And uh, that's just the joy of searching and the joy of finding and ticking a sign, a neon sign off my wish list, like that never gets old for me. So hopefully it never ever gets old and this passion keeps burning. Cause you're not getting rid of me anytime soon. I'll tell you that much. Zorky F-E-D Ya asks, what do you think about Leica cameras? Have you tried any of them? This question is a bit of a, quink a quinky dink. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I actually, just purchased a Leica. Now I want to qualify this by saying I didn't purchase a M6, I didn't purchase an M4, I didn't purchase an MP, I purchased a Leica CL. The Leica CL is kind of the forgotten cousin of the Leica camera lineup. Um, it was released around the same time as the M5 and produced in collaboration with Minolta. So the camera was manufactured to Leica's specs but done so in Japan. So for a lot of Leica heads and fanatics, they look at the CL and they're like, well, it's not a real Leica. Come on, bro. So the price is actually fairly reasonable. It's a tiny rangefinder camera, really delightful to hold, really fun to shoot with. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna make a video about the Leica CL at some point. If anybody's interested, just drop a comment. You know what to do. Come on, man. Beyond that, my boy Nat just got a Leica M11 and uh, that's just also a coincidence. That's not why I bought the CL. I don't have Envy. I do have Envy. Um, but uh, Leicas have always been sort of a, eh, I'm not really sure if I would want that sort of thing. Not only are you investing in such a ridiculous price point, I don't shoot that much 30, traditional 35 millimeter film. Um, I do a lot of like sprocket shots, fisheye stuff, you know. I do, I have creative applications for 35 millimeter, but I don't just normally shoot shoot it that much. So it took me a long time to sort of settle on getting a Leica CL, but I'm very stoked. I'm very stoked about it. It is, it is, it is real nice. And finally, Gregor SF asks, what's in store for 2023? 2023, I think is gonna be a bop. Um, there's gonna be some new stuff happening on In An Instant on this channel that uh, is gonna be, I think, a little bit bigger than stuff that I've done before. Um, it's gonna be interesting to try to manage 
uh, producing videos with regularity while also trying to do these like larger episodes. Um, it may in fact be something that I ask the community to help with. Uh, I don't want to reveal exactly what it is right now, but there may be a crowdfunding element. I've always been very reticent to dive into crowdfunding, um, but I, I'm thinking of uh, launching a series on In an Instant that's a little bit more like a TV show style show um, that involves cameras, that involves a little bit of travel, and uh, I'm very excited about the concept. So this is a little tease. Uh, this isn't a fully baked thing yet, um, but I guess if that rings your ear as something somewhat interesting, if you as a viewer would want to pay a little bit sort of like a patreon style thing and get a you know a photo book in return or get like a producer credit and get like an original print if that stuff sounds of interest i'd love to hear from you um, because i do want to go big i do want to take the youtube platform and do something a little bit more interesting and involved with it um i love making traditional 10 minute videos or whatever but um i do have bigger dreams uh for things that can be done here so um, yeah, 2023 I think is gonna be kind of hype. So I'm very, very stoked for everything we've got moving forward. We're gonna be in the new space. We're gonna be bringing dreams to life. And thank you so much for watching in an instant. Go ahead and drop your little dungus on that subscribe button. Dungus is in this case means your butt. Stay tuned for more reviews, lounge episodes, breakdowns, tips, guides, and all things instant and analog and literally whatever.